Maggie from the blog BackToTheLandLiving.com and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a girl's linen pinafore dress. I'm making mine for my little sister for Easter. They are so cute and they're very easy to make. They're just a bunch of squares pretty well sewn together. So I'm going to show you how to make it. You don't need a pattern for this tutorial. I'm going to walk you through the process of how to measure the girl you're making it for and how to cut out all the pieces and sew them together. So thanks so much for being here and let's get into the video. project you're going to need a few things. First of all you're going to need a sewing machine. I'm using my Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine today but you could use whatever sewing machine you have. You're also going to need some fabric. I am using some linen fabric. I'm using a nice blue linen that's left over from actually the curtains that I made for my sister's house. That's a video I did a few weeks ago so if you want to check that out I'll leave a link to it. So I'm using the leftovers from that but I also am using um, some other linen fabric to line this dress but you could use whatever fabric you'd like. And also you're going to want some matching thread that matches whatever fabric you're using on the outside of your dress. You're going to want some elastic. I'm using some braided elastic that's one inch thick. A pair of fabric scissors, a sewing measuring tape, and a couple of buttons for securing the back of the dress. You also may want some pins and an iron to help you sew straight and keep your seam straight. So to begin, you first need to measure the girl that you're making this dress for. Hi, I'm Leah. This is my little sister and she's who I'm making this dress for so I'm going to show you how to measure the person you're making the dress for. So to start, I'm going to get you to put your arms out a little bit and we're going to measure around her waist. So we're going to take her waist measurement and then after that we're going to measure from the point of the waist down to how long we want the skirt to be. Is that about good? Yep. Okay. And then we're going to measure from the waist point, which is about where her belly button is, up to where the top of the shirt should go. So it's going to go about here about there across her chest yeah. and then we're going to measure horizontally how wide so it'll be about seven and a half inches and then the last measurement you're going to need is from her where the top of the shirt will be and then if you can turn around for me down to where the waist is so you're going to take the measurement and because the straps are going to be crisscrossed you want it to be horizontal so that's about 16 inches and then we're going to use these measurements to cut out our pattern pieces so I'm going to share with you the pieces that I cut out based off the measurements of my sister, which she is approximately a size 8 in girls. So if you have a different size scale, you can just change your pieces to based off what I give you. If you want this all written down, I'll leave a link in the description to my blog post so we will have all the measurements written down. So since the waist measured 25 inches, we're going to add 10 inches to that. So that gives us 35 inches for the waistband. And the reason we want to increase the waistband is so that some bunching. Since we want the waistband to end up being 35 inches long, and an inch and a half wide. We're going to be cutting it out 35 and a half inches long and two inches high and that gives us half an inch for seam allowance. For the top, since we she measured to be eight inches high and seven and a half inches across, we're going to add half an inch to both of those for seam allowance so we're going to end up cutting out eight and a half by eight. For the straps, since it was 16 inches and we want to have an inch and a half strap. The straps will be doubled over and then sewn around. So we're going to take that measurement of 1.5 that we want and double it to give us three inches. And since the straps are 16 inches long for her, I'm going to add four inches to that so we have some wiggle room. So my straps will end up being the 20 inches long plus three and a half inches considering seam allowance. For the skirt, since it's 25 inch waist, I want it to be a really full skirt and so I'm going to be cutting out 50 inches for the skirt width. That will be a double. And then for the skirt length, I measured to be 16 inches, but since I want there to be enough to hem with, I'm going to cut out 17 inches. And you could have a bigger hem, I'm just using the fabric that was left over, so I'm just working with what I have. But if you have more fabric, you can just cut it out. If you want a larger hem, you can add to that. So after you have all your pieces cut out of the main fabric you're using, you're going to want to cut out your lining pieces. So you're going to cut out a lining piece for the skirt, for the bodice top piece, and for the waistband. But since we're folding the strap pieces over and sewing around them, we don't need to have a lining for those. And so to cut out your lining, just take the fabric pieces you've already cut out, lay them on top of your lining, and then cut around them. To begin, we're going to sew our straps for the dress. So we're going to take our piece of fabric for the strap and fold it in half. And if you want to, you can pin, but I'm just going to hold it and sew. 
And if you have a good side to your fabric, you want to fold it so the good side's on the inside. And then we're going to sew one top end and down the other, and then leave one end open. And my machine is just on a straight stitch with a 3 inch length and a width of 0. turned right side out, you're going to press it down with an iron and then do a top stitch all the way around just the three sides, leaving that one end open still because that's the end that's going to be hidden within the dress so we don't need to finish that. Also at this time we're going to attach the waistband elastic. So for your elastic, you're going to need to cut out how big to make it. So for this we need the measurement of the girl's waist and the measurement of a bodice width. So Leah measured to be 25 inches in her waist and the bodice piece is 8 inches wide, so 25 inches minus 8 inches is 17 inches. So that's how much I need to go around, but I'm going to add 1 inch of that so I have half an inch on each side for attaching it to the bodice piece. So I'm going to be cutting out an 18 inch piece of elastic. Once you have your straps all finished and sewn and you have your waistband elastic cut out, it's time to pin those pieces to the bodice so that they can be sewn up. So you're going to attach the straps to the lining first and get them in place. We want to attach them along the top edge and in a quarter inch on each side since we're going to be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. So pin them on the lining side. Then you're going to attach the elastic waistband. So you want to come up just a little bit, about a quarter inch from the bottom and attach it on each side, sticking out a quarter inch from the edge on each side. So you want the length of the straps and the extra elastic to all be inside of the bodice piece. After you have it pinned all in place, you're going to lay your outside fabric on top, putting the good side in, and you're going to pin all the way around the edge. So when you're done, you want the elastics and the straps to be sandwiched in between the lining and the outer layer of your dress. Then you're going to sew around the three sides, starting at the bottom of one side, up, across the top, and down the other, and leaving the bottom edge open so that the whole top piece can be turned right side out and all the seams will be hidden within it. onto the skirt piece. So we'll come back to the waist at the end to attach the skirt to the top. For the skirt we're going to start with hemming and that's because it's just easier to hem it when it's one long straight piece than after it's been gathered and sewn together. So we'll hem the two pieces separately. We're going to hem the outer piece which is my balloon linen. I'm going to fold it over a quarter of an inch, iron it down, then another quarter of an inch, iron it down, and then sew a straight stitch. And then for the lining piece, I'm going to fold it up a half an inch, iron it down, then another half inch and iron it down, and that will make the lining a bit shorter than the outer piece, and that will make it so when the dress is being worn, you won't see the lining. After you have finished the hem of both your skirt and your lining, you're going to individually fold them in half so the good sides are on the inside. You're going to sew along the edge, and that will give you a circle for your skirt. You're also going to do that for the lining, so you want there to be two separate pieces. Once you've made your skirt into a loop, go along that raw edge with a zigzag stitch just to hold in the loose threads and keep the fabric from fraying. After you have your skirt and your lining both sewn into a circle, we're going to attach them together at the top where the waistband will be. So you're going to put the lining inside of the skirt piece and have the good sides facing out like you're going to want them in the end. And we're going to do around the whole top, we're going to do two straight stitches to do a gathering stitch. And so for this, you're going to have a longer stitch length and you're not going to back and forward stitch to the beginning or the end. So you want to put two seams all the way around just below the top. And after you have your seam in, you're going to pull either end to gather it up so that it becomes the same width as our waistband. Next, we're going to attach the waistband to the top piece of the dress. And to do this, we're going to sandwich the top piece between the lining and the main fabric of the waistband. So we're going to lay the main fabric just above where the elastic attaches to the bodice piece 
and you're going to lay your good fabric on top of your good fabric with the good side of your waistband pointed in and you're going to lay your lining piece attached to your lining piece and they should be laid right on top of each other so they line up and then you're going to pin that all in place so you're going to pin through the fabric of the waistband the bodice and the lining all in one sandwiching together and then where the waistband sticks out you're going to pin the lining to the main fabric and we're going to do a straight stitch all the way down from one end to the other end connecting it all together and make sure you put your machine back on your normal stitch length next we're going to just get the waistband ready to be attached to the skirt and so what we're going to do is we're going to sew both ends of the waistband together so put the right sides together and just do a straight stitch along it to make it into one big loop now we're going to add a bit of support to the elastic so where the elastic meets the top piece, we're going to just secure it a little bit more and we're going to do a few more stitches in a square and that will just give it a bit more strength when it's being worn. And finally, we're going to trim off the extra fabric that is beneath where the elastics meet the top piece. So there's a little bit extra there and we're just going to trim it off so that everything fits more nicely and less bulky inside of the waistband. Now we're going to attach the waistband to the skirt. So to begin, we're going to take the back seam of the waistband on the lining part and match it up with the back seam of the skirt. So take those two seams, lay them flat together so that they're flush along the top and we're going to pin them in place. And we're going to pin that all the way around so you want the gathering of the skirt to match up with the length of the waistband. So pin the lining section of the waistband to the inside of the skirt, have it all pinned down and then do one straight stitch all the way around and I'm going to be aiming to sew in between my two lines of gathering stitch. So now that we've attached the lining side of the waistband to the skirt, we need to attach the front piece of fabric to the skirt, and that's going to sandwich the elastic inside of it. So we need to iron down a hem on the outside fabric for the waistband. So I'm going to go around the whole edge of that and iron down a quarter of an inch, and then fold it over, sandwiching the elastic band inside of it, and pin it to the top of the skirt piece. And I'm going to aim to sew just along the edge. We're going to do a top stitch all the way around and about in line of where our bottom gathering stitch was. When you're sewing your final piece of your waistband down, it may be difficult to sew because of the elastic, but just hold the elastic tight while you're sewing so you can get a nice flat straight stitch. Once you're done, you're going to trim off your threads and then you're pretty well done with this project. The last thing to do is try your dress onto the girl you're making it for and measure where the buttonholes need to go on your straps. So put the dress on the girl you're making it for, put the straps over her shoulders and measure where you want the buttonhole to go. Put a pin in that spot and then come back to your sewing machine and make your buttonhole and then sew your button onto the waistband of your dress and you're all done. subscribe so you can see the next ones that come out. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.